Hi, I'm Craig Grant and this is Cobweb Maths where we connect things. Now this is the first video in a series I call Math Teaching 101. So it's, this is Math Teaching 101.1 and it begins at the beginning of my teaching career and the purpose of Math Teaching 101 videos is to show you how my teaching style developed. Uh, it just didn't happen overnight um, and possibly you can understand and take some lessons from that. First one. The title is Eliminating the Forest of Hands. In 1971 I began teaching at a co-ed secondary school in Christchurch. There was a serious shortage of teachers in New Zealand at the time. I had no guidance and the textbooks were terrible. My lessons produced a forest of hands and I spent too much time helping students with their problems. So I ditched the textbooks and I made up my own questions, duplicated them and I used them instead. It helped, but it did not eliminate the forest of hands. During my first teaching year, I also attended university doing a, an education paper to complete my degree. Now, I ran across a key piece of research uh, in my studies. It was about teaching using small steps. The research found there was no significant difference between high IQ students and low IQ students if you use small steps. And it concluded that um, high IQ students just cope with uh, poor teaching better. It's as simple as that. I stumbled onto a way of eliminating the forest of hands by using small steps. Now, Creating and duplicating questions was quite time consuming. One day, when I didn't have anything duplicated, what I did, I wrote a test of 10 questions on, a, on the board before the class came in. The class came in, I then worked through the first three questions and then um, told them to get on with the rest. Uh, and then I started on the, the second set of questions. Um, I got, I probably got about three, three or four done and then the first hand went up. So I then stopped and went to help that student and the hand started to appear and I stopped, the, stopped everybody working before the um, hands became the forest. Uh, then I went through and I reviewed all ten questions with the class and answered all their questions and then set them loose on um, the second set which wasn't completed and then I worked on completing the second question, set, second set of questions. I probably had about seven questions to do and what I did is I used the feedback I got from the first set. The class did much better on the second set and there was no forest of hands. So we reviewed the questions um, and then I put up the next set and so the lesson progressed and we made amazing progress. Now making up the uh, problems for me was quite easy. I had all that practice making up my own problems and duplicating them. Now on reflection I'm going to tell you three things I now know. My first school was in a poor area of Christchurch and as a first year teacher I didn't get the best classes. I had problems teaching my students, which I didn't encounter during my teaching practice at schools from affluent areas where I was given good classes. Teaching using small steps solved these problems. Using feedback from my students was important, as feedback is the breakfast of champions. Now, here's another thing I picked up. Teachers who use textbooks as a crutch never learn to run. I learn to make up questions. I learn how questions work. I learned how students worked on their questions. Now textbooks are good for reinforcing what students have learned, but textbooks box in your thinking and often don't have questions that are suitable for your class. And if you don't make up your own questions, then it hampers your teaching. That's all I've got to say.
Thank you very much.